Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be pulling off the crossover event of the century, comparing both World of Tanks and War Thunder. I've been playing War Thunder fairly consistently for the past eight years, with only a few small breaks being dotted in there. While I played World of Tanks for years prior to playing War Thunder, getting up to tier nine and tier eight with two different countries, and still a bit sense. Because of that, I feel like I am in a good position to be able to compare and contrast both games in several major ways. These primary categories will be gameplay and sounds, real graphics, monetization, accessibility for new players, if either game is paid to win, and more. That said, as always, please subscribe if you like this type of content, but either way, let's get into it. Let's start by getting into the most fundamental thing about both games, their gameplay. This is likely to be the largest section of the video for obvious reasons. For World of Tanks, you can expect a more arcadey type of game, as many of the features such as aiming, damage, movement, and nearly everything else is not too based on real life statistics or models, but rather whatever wargaming feels might make a vehicle more balanced or a better fit in a certain role or tier. World of Tanks also uses hit points and modules, although the modules are, like the rest of the game, simplified so that the casual player can get into it more easily. War Thunder, on the other hand, is a much more complex game, with no tanks having hit points, but rather historically realistic modules and crew, of which can be killed, resulting in a tank death. Further, they used mostly, if not entirely, accurate modeling, accurately showing where ammo racks, engines, extra armor, crew members, and more all sat in a tank, with each tank having fairly unique and precise weak spots. Further, whereas World of Tanks has a total of 10 tiers of vehicles, Gaijin has broken them down into sub-tiers called BRs, or battle ratings, of which there are over 30 in War Thunder. This allows for a much more precise placement of a vehicle because, as stated before, while World of Tanks is much more of an arcade-style game that does not focus much on real-life stats, War Thunder doesn't have that liberty, although they do occasionally change stats to better meld with the game, though these stat changes tend to be fairly small. This said, because Gaijin, the creators of War Thunder, cannot simply put a Tiger H1 and a Tiger E in the same tier because they have somewhat different capabilities, the sub-tier system, again known as BR, was created in order to facilitate the smaller differences between tank variants. Of course, this causes much controversy in the community when a vehicle that is seen as powerful is dropped by, for example, 0.3 BR, but it still beats having the nearly 2,000 real vehicles and vehicles variants squeeze into a total of 10 tiers, like Wargaming has for World of Tanks, although of course they have far fewer vehicles. Again, each system works for each game, but War Thunder is a much more complex system built around the fact that it is supposed to accurately model every vehicle to the best of the abilities of the developers. In this regard, World of Tanks might be easier to immediately jump into for many players, especially casual players, but War Thunder rewards patience and doesn't take too much longer to learn than World of Tanks. In addition, War Thunder has support for you to to play close air support from planes and helicopters while in ground combat, whereas World of Tanks does not. In the same vein, War Thunder has tanks, planes, and ships in the same game integrated into a single application, whereas World of Tanks, planes, and warships are all separate games with no interchange between the three. On top of this, and I'll go over this in more detail soon, War Thunder has more modern vehicles, up through the T-90, Leopard 2A6, and M1A2 Abrams built into the base game for everyone to play, as well as other top-tier vehicles, whereas at current World of Tanks Modern Armor is only available on console with, again, more of an arcade feel than it being realistic like you have in War Thunder. Well, at least to the point that they can be, considering that many of the most modern vehicles in-game have extremely classified specifications. Not that this doesn't stop a few people from, of course, trying to improve the tanks that they literally crew in real life for War Thunder by leaking classified information in War Thunder forums. In addition, going along with the simplified nature of World of Tanks, there are no secondary weapons, such as machine guns, ATGMs, or auto cannons, meaning that your cannon will be the only tool that you can regularly use to inflict damage on the enemy. Further, War Thunder has tons of specialized and realistically specced ammunition, with each tank typically receiving the loadout that it was capable of using in real life, down to the exact shell name, weight, speed, and other specifications. This is because Gaijin uses first-hand sources in order to put things in-game, which means that they will oftentimes comb through vehicle manuals and historical documents to figure out the exact specifications of pretty much everything in-game. Again, down to about as much as they can, though they of course do make some exceptions to this adherence to the dogma of realism. This means that tanks, especially in the modern era, can use many different shell types such as AP, HE, APHE, APCR, APCBC, 
APDS, APF SDS, HESH, HEAT, HEAT FS, and even some types of ATGMs, as some modern tanks, especially Russian tanks, have the ability to fire ATGMs from their cannons. There are still plenty of smaller caliber auto cannon shell types, MG bullet types, and more, and that's only in relation to tanks. When factoring in planes and helicopters, both of which can play a huge role in ground battles, you're looking at adding many more types of guns and ammunition on top of what I just mentioned. World of Tanks, on the other hand, basically has AP, APCR, and HE ammunition for every regular tank, though artillery and some tanks will be able to use other shells, such as British tanks with Hesh and the occasional vehicle being able to use heat. This said, vehicle types are also incredibly different between games. World of Tanks uses roles to help describe tanks such as a BK-3601H being described as a breakthrough heavy tank or a Super Hellcat being described as a sniper tank destroyer. In War Thunder, the general types are simply light tank, medium tank, heavy tank, tank destroyer, anti-tank missile carrier, and SPAA. Vehicle types are one of the ways that War Thunder is arguably simpler than World of Tanks. This said, while War Thunder has SPAA, of which can also be used to destroy enemy tanks, especially whilst flanking, they lack true artillery. Or better said, player-controlled artillery vehicles that function as artillery. There are some artillery vehicles in War Thunder, or vehicles with howitzers and or mortars, but none have the ability to target across the map in a specialized aiming mode like you can do in World of Tanks. Rather, artillery is a power given to light and medium tanks that allows you to target a specific area and have computer-controlled artillery pound that area for a few seconds. As stated before though, where World of Tanks has artillery, War Thunder has fast-firing SPAA that can be dual-purpose as both a tank destroyer or anti-aircraft, so it truly depends on whatever your preference is. This said, World of Tanks, as mentioned before, can take many liberties with their vehicles that War Thunder simply cannot, as World of Tanks is not a game designed to act as a secondary compendium of digitized World War II vehicles, like War Thunder Thunder is, at least to a point. Rather, World of Tanks has many vehicles that are purely functional and never existed. War Thunder, on the other hand, and with very few exceptions, only has vehicles that were built in real life. For example, did you know that the Russians used a double-barreled IS-2 tank called the IS-22 because it has two cannons? Well, they didn't, but that doesn't matter because it's in World of Tanks anyways. Whereas a small portion of vehicles in War Thunder had liberties taken with how realistic they are, none of the vehicles in-game are outright incorrect. Though, of course, some do have inaccuracies. If you're like me, and are a history freak, War Thunder will likely state your need much more than World of Tanks, as the information and detail for all of these vehicles, tanks, planes, and ships is excellent. You can even see where portions of internals were located, which is awesome, and can even test, for example, what the shell of an M1A2 Abrams would do against a King Tiger tank. It's actually pretty darn interesting. Further, Gameplay in War Thunder is rather simple, and hasn't changed much in the near decade that this game has been playable. More or less, for ground forces, it's just a capture point slash king of the hill style of gameplay, with teams seeking to destroy enemy players, as matches can often end where an enemy team runs out of vehicles. Typically, there are one or three capture points, largely depending on the BR of your vehicle. This is played in either arcade, realistic, or simulator settings, with the realism of the game increasing until you reach simulator, where it literally has you controlling the tank from the inside with no visual aids to help distinguish between friend or foe, or to even help you find where the enemy tank is. You will typically face up to one BR higher of vehicles than your current highest BR vehicle, or you will be the top vehicle fighting others up to a full BR below you, whereas World of Tanks has you fighting plus or minus up to two tiers from you. Further, in War Thunder, especially in top tier matches, you may encounter a night match in which night vision or, better yet, thermal optics will be necessary. You typically need to unlock these for your vehicle, otherwise you will find it very difficult fighting by the light of a occasional flares being randomly launched into the sky. Aside from these slight variations on realism and conditions in a match, with War Thunder occasionally also experiencing rain or snow, War Thunder is a fairly standardized beast. There are also PvE-style modes where you can basically have to defend against waves of enemies attacking you and your team, but these are more of a sideshow in War Thunder as many people don't really play them. In World of Tanks, the game modes are much more varied, with random battles being typical, but you can also fight in ranked battles, which isn't something normally doable in War Thunder, barring squadron fights. You can also fight in stronghold battles, in which you have to fight for resources with a lineup of tanks in World of Tanks. Otherwise, it's one death and you're out in World of Tanks, whereas War Thunder allows you to bring a lineup of tanks to all of your matches, allowing you to spawn in after your first death and, depending on how well you do afterwards, more spawns to follow. You can also bring aircraft to the fight as well. When it comes to the economy and overall monetization, War Thunder is, in my opinion, the 
winner as rewards versus repairs and ammunition expenses tends to be much more favorable for the player especially if you're not bad at the game whereas world of tanks has much costlier ammunition and repairs in general along with a much higher vehicle cost in my experience the economy in war thunder is far more favorable for the players as matches in which i lose currency are almost unheard of with premium time whereas in world of tanks it is quite different while you can earn money it is substantially less compared to the costs ammo in world of tanks is far more expensive in general premium time is available on both platforms although war thunder's premium time is less expensive with war thunder costing 39 dollars 99 for 180 days of premium time compared to world of tanks at 57 dollars 49 for that same 180 days both war thunder and world of tanks premium time functions pretty much in the same way allowing you to earn more in-game currency as well as research new vehicles and modifications more quickly this is the same with premium vehicles in both games as well for customization both games do it fairly similarly although world of tanks as i'll get into soon is very heavily monetized in this area much more so than war thunder in short both games allow you to purchase skins although world of tanks will allow you to purchase temporary skins with their normal camouflages actually giving you a small benefit in terms of reducing your visibility to the enemy in war thunder all skins are permanent with camels being able to be unlocked by simply playing a vehicle and others being available on the war thunder marketplace which is a player controlled but gaijin owned and operated marketplace where people can buy and sell skins decorations for their vehicles as well as vehicles themselves all for the cost determined by players themselves some vehicles on the war thunder marketplace have gone for upwards of fifteen hundred dollars before though in my experience most are between twenty and eighty dollars these skins and camos in war thunder do not decrease visibility as they essentially reduce rendering range in world of tanks but rather they can help you blend in better with the background in war thunder in much the same way you can buy or earn foliage to place on your tank allowing you to blend in with certain areas of the maps especially when driving amongst bushes and trees now in terms of sound world of tanks while certainly clear has a much more generic sound set having big guns sound like other big guns medium-sized guns sounding like other medium-sized guns and engines all sounding fairly similar depending on your tier size and the speed of your vehicle War Thunder, while not perfect and having tons of detractors amongst its own community, is forever in a changing soundscape, with each patch releasing tons of new audio in order to make them as real as possible. The F-104, for example, has seen an upgrade to its jet engine spooling up similarly to how they would in real life. For tanks, as we are comparing those in this video, the gun sounds are especially fresh, though engine sounds are indeed less special, with each tank sounding fairly similar.
What is interesting, however, is how sound relates to gameplay, as you will oftentimes hear the sound of an enemy's tank before you see them, giving you the edge in an ambush. In addition to this point, one could lie in wait and simply shut off their engine so as to not give away their position. In that regard, and in many ways, again, speaking to the amount that one can do in War Thunder versus World of Tanks, one could effectively use sound as both a weapon and shield in War Thunder. Though, of course, this is also slightly possible in World of Tanks, although to a lesser degree. At this point, I've basically gone over most of the important gameplay and sound tidbits. Now I'll go over whatever I did not touch on already in terms of realism, graphics, and then I'll finish it up with if either game is paid to win, to what extent, and their accessibility to new players, as well as the stability and bugginess of each game. Additionally, in order to save time in this video, I'll try to put my list of notes about some of the other major differences between the two games in the description below, if you'd like to check that out. Now that said, let's start with the bugginess of both games, and unfortunately, with all of the complexity of War Thunder, mounted on top of the fairly upgradable Dagor engine, War Thunder experiences a fair amount of bugs and server issues. For example, things like ghost shells, server stability, and visual glitches are often considered to be issues with a game that are fairly persistent. These issues are, in both my experience and research, also present in World of Tanks, which leads to neither game necessarily having an edge in terms of how bug-free they are. Of course, with constant content updates, multiplayer-based gameplay, and events always taking place, bugs are bound to happen, and there are not a shortage in either game, though I will say that these issues tend to not be constant and something that will not affect you with every match, or even close to it. At least, not for me anyways. In regards to accessibility, so how player-friendly these are, especially for new players, I'll say that for the layman, World of Tanks might be slightly easier to get into, but will also have a much lower ceiling. War Thunder, on the other hand, is typically preferred by those who are more self-described history buffs and or want a more realistic experience in their game. Again, it is not a simulator, but War Thunder is far more realistic on even arcade settings than World of Tanks is on any game mode. This said, World of Tanks is not just something that you will be able to get into and be able to master immediately either, as learning how the module system works, as well as all of the consumables, of which there are many, as well as their more complex crew system, will still take a substantial amount of time, along with just learning how gameplay works. Arguably, if you have a decent enough knowledge of physics, as well as how tanks in general work, War Thunder may be even easier for you to learn, as it attempts to mimic reality as well as it can while still being accessible to the masses. For example, in World of Tanks, as mentioned before, you can hit a tank and either bounce the shell or pen the tank, but that's pretty much it. After a successful pen, you can damage crew, modules, and reduce the enemy's HP. For example, in War Thunder, if you are fighting a Tiger tank and you're in a Sherman tank using the M61 shell, you may have a good enough understanding of how both angle of fire works, plus historical weak spots of the tanks, that will allow you to naturally know where to hit and can destroy tanks based on that knowledge of alone. World of Tanks, on the other hand, has far less less precise weak spots, of which can be confusing, especially as shell options are far fewer. That said, all of the options in War Thunder can also be a bit overwhelming, as you will oftentimes have three to five types of shells that you can choose from, with things like normalization and ricochet angle being standard fare on what they show on their stat cards. Add in their own sometimes confusing module system, and it can be a bit too much in a pretty similar way that World of Tanks can be. I'll say this though about the two. World of Tanks may be better for those that are familiar with the concept of consumables and are less history or oriented, whereas War Thunder is better for those that like shell choice, variability between tanks, and have a somewhat working knowledge of basic physics and or history, as those can greatly aid you in the learning curve for this game. Further, UI in World of Tanks, as well as what we have in War Thunder, is a bit much at first, but are both easily overcomable with a bit of curiosity, as each option, for the most part, tends to be well laid out and even, in some instances, explained. I would still hazard that War Thunder is slightly easier to navigate, as it doesn't have the incredible amount of consumer consumables and modifiers that World of Tanks has, though it does have its own pitfalls and poorly explained sections, such as the Assault Arcade modes and the Item Shop. Including the deficiencies of the UI for both World of Tanks and War Thunder, I say that they're pretty much about equal, although World of Tanks has far more pop-ups and things lighting up everywhere, of which can quickly add to your confusion, as these are intended for monetization purposes, which can confuse players as to what is and what is not included in the free-to-play portion of the game. For realism, and I'll just touch on what I pretty much already stated earlier in the video, but War Thunder pretty much takes the crown here. This is not necessarily something that people may want, however, which is why World of Tanks, as well as other World of games, still exist and are doing fairly well. That said, things like realistic tank speeds, turret traverse speeds, shell drop, secondary armaments, gunner optics, as well as commander sights for some vehicles, night vision and thermal vision, and even automatic ATGM countermeasures are pretty well modeled in War Thunder. In World of Tanks, those features such as largely universal gunner optics and shell drop, as well as less 
realistic speed and physics are going to be the norm. In much the same way as mentioned before, War Thunder is a much more precise measure of armor thickness and shell normalization as volumetric shells, ammo types, and more all play a very important and precise role for if a shell makes it through a tank or not. The weak spot in the front of a tank could literally be where the armor plates are riveted together, and will thusly be modeled as being a tiny, thin weak spot that you can try to hit while being in combat. This, along with the aforementioned shell normalization, realistic shell types for what was historically used in any given tank, as well as simply just things like Ostketten to certain German tanks that would have been used in that upgrade, means that War Thunder is, by far, the much more realistic game when considering both War Thunder and World of Tanks. Heck, some vehicles such as modern armor tanks have stabilized cannons, with the M4 Sherman and other older tanks having somewhat limited stabilizers in game, as they would have had in real life. Further, when it comes to shooting your cannon, War Thunder basically takes where the cannon is pointing when you press fire, and will have modeled shell dispersion that will have your shell possibly deviate from the center of where your barrel was pointing the further that the shell travels. World of Tanks, on the other hand, will have a large area in which you can hit, regardless of where your cannon was pointing, that will shrink as you sit still for longer periods of time, increasing accuracy as you scope in. This more or less prevents you from taking shots on the move, unless of course you are very lucky or close to an enemy, or of course you have a module or an equipment upgrade that will help you, whereas taking moving shots in War Thunder is extremely possible and largely skill-based, as opposed to having the game force your cannon to be inaccurate until you've sat still long enough for you to be able to fire again fairly accurately. Now for graphics, World of Tanks, as mentioned numerous times, is much more arcade based and as such has visual style to match. There are flatter, less rough surfaces on their tanks, making them all look fairly new and unused. They also lack fine details like dents and other damage. War Thunder is, as stated before, more realistic and has a newer, more advanced game engine, of which can actually push most casual graphics cards fairly hard. War Thunder has mud splash up on vehicles, permanent damage on vehicles, which of course, to be fair, World of Tanks also has scratches, damage on side skirts, chips, dings, and more. In general, you can tell that the vehicles in War Thunder are meant to be zoomed in on and appreciated, whereas they still look pretty in World of Tanks, but they look much more like toys rather than vehicles, especially when considering the fact that a huge portion of the vehicles in World of Tanks never exist in real life, and thus could have liberties taken with how they look, compared to the vast majority of vehicles in War Thunder being not only real, but also being accurate and to spec. This said, the environments feel larger in War Thunder, sometimes being upwards of around 8x8 kilometers, with some maps being urban areas with tall buildings and thin alleyways, and others being forests, snow, desert, or a mixture of any of those. World of Tanks, on the other hand, has a maximal map size of 1x1 kilometer, which speeds up gameplay tremendously, but also removes some level of tactics from any match. In nearly every case, the Dagor graphics engine used by War Thunder seems substantially more capable of making environments befitting to a battlefield. This one is obviously a judgment call as both games are capable capable of producing wonderful environments. Again, as is the theme with the rest of this video, it's basically going to be realism versus arcade, with World of Tanks looking like a toy box and War of Thunder literally copying the battlefield around the Reichstag into a map for War of Thunder tanks. So that leads us to the big question, are either of these games pay to win and if so, by how much? As soon as a free-to-play multiplayer game has some sort of monetization, you run into people criticizing it as being pay to win, due to pretty much every aspect of the game being dominated by the economy, which itself is heavily influenced by if you spend real money on the game or not. In both World of Tanks and War Thunder, we see premium accounts and premium vehicles, along with ways to enhance crew capabilities to make your tank more effective, all with the use of real money. That is more or less where War Thunder stops, however, as with the exception of allowing you to grind more easily, such as with enhanced access to boosters and premium currency bonuses, you simply don't get any sort of in-match benefit for spending money on the game. Some people may consider a premium vehicle to be overpowered in War Thunder, such as with the T-72 AV terms, but if you know what you're doing, it is easily defeatable and provides no benefit over any other vehicle in-game, premium or otherwise. It simply may be better for one person's playstyle or another, but it does not outright provide an advantage while in a match. Much the same goes for premium vehicles in World of Tanks. To this end, War Thunder's economy can end up being a vicious cycle, draining people of in-game currency which would, in extreme cases, prevent people from being able to bring another vehicle into a match, but those cases, in my experience, are not too common, and are easily avoidable with either skill, some planning, or both. Now World of Tanks, on the other hand, actively provides one match only consumables and permanent equipment that you can purchase with a major improvement in your equipment in any given match. A gun rammer, for example, is a 
piece of optional equipment that gives you a better reload rate and can cost a prohibitive amount of money that many more premium players can afford. In the Tiger II, for example, it costs 500,000 credits and gives a massive 10% better reload time. The same goes with consumables, such as 105 octane fuel, where you need to spend 20,000 credits each match in order to have 10% more engine power and turret traverse speed. Again, these costs are so massive that it largely prohibits the purchase of these items that objectively make you more powerful in combat to premium players. Even ammunition costs far more in World of Tanks, with the objectively best ammunition sometimes costing upwards of 20 times the standard shell cost for a certain vehicle, whereas War Thunder might charge up to a few hundred silver lines for specialty ammo, which is tantamount to the same cost of standard ammo on many tanks in World of Tanks. War Thunder, however, does not charge for use of stock ammunition. This said, going back to consumables and equipment, War Thunder has no analog to this, although one could certainly argue that the module system in War Thunder, in which you need to play matches to unlock, for example, a better shell for your tank, is made easier with the premium account, though this is the same in World of Tanks with its module system. In all, while both games obviously have a monetization model, I think it's clear that World of Tanks has a much more aggressive monetization model, as well as a much clearer case for being paid to win, whereas War Thunder seems to be more of a pay to progress more easily type of model. Again, certain paid features in War Thunder will allow you to unlock some modules more easily, but World of Tanks also features this. War Thunder, in my opinion, wins in the monetization and pay to win category because, to be quite honest with you, I do not think War Thunder is pay to win. However, again, you could certainly make that argument for World of Tanks. With all that said, however, in conclusion, both World of Tanks and War Thunder attract people with fairly similar interests, and that people who like tanks will probably like these games. The difference, however, lies where War Thunder is a much more comprehensive game, including greater amounts of realism, historical accuracy, and variability in gameplay, whereas World of Tanks is far more of the quick match arcade preferring audience. As stated before, even War Thunder's arcade setting is far more realistic than World of Tanks has ever been and will likely ever be, with War Thunder players making fun of arcade mode, of course, in War Thunder for being so unrealistic compared to both War Thunder realistic and simulator settings. Either way, while I personally feel that War Thunder has much more to offer for the average player, between its thousands of vehicles, integrated gameplay featuring air, ground, and naval all in the same application, and again, its historical accuracy and realism, World of Tanks still has something to say for people that don't care about any of those things and might want to play the what-if tanks that Gaijin absolutely refuses to have put in War Thunder. Additionally, it's also really, really quick per match, so that offers a lot of draw as well. Ultimately, while I hope that I was able to lay out accurate differences and values between each game, it is your choice which game you feel that you might enjoy more, as they both have plenty to offer perspective and veteran players. That said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. For those that stuck with me to this point, your views mean the world to me. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe if you like this type of content, but either way, thanks again, and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care, everyone.